you know, spend a lot of time out there looking for that special place that just clicks. And I think I've been lucky enough to find several. But you know, when you travel and you get to the one park or the one view where you could just spend hours and hours sitting there and just contemplating just the view or the ocean or the waves. I think it's something that everybody looks for, at that, that sense of place. So I'm looking back at one of my notes that I'd made and it's almost like I'm looking at myself thinking, uh, wow, I'm almost nine years into a, a four year plan. So just wondering now uh, where you are and, and if you're slowly working your way towards what your goals are. So what is it for you that gives you the fizz? What's your, what's your ultimate, what's your thing that you're looking for? What's your goal? What's the next stop? What's, what's the, you know, what are you planning as your next move? I don't know what kind of bird that is, but you can hear it. It's definitely got a unique song. I wonder what what story he's telling right now. So I was out walking the dog last night and watching the sunset and thinking about places that I've been able to travel up until this point uh, before RVing full time and after. Hi Dave. What did you think of the trail today? Huh? It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the freaking pizza? <laughs> <laughs> Dave and Jim, we're hoping for rain here. There's a sign of it. Oh, it's working. The rain is coming. I mean, the sun is coming out. Look at this. I did. You see me? And now, David, I see you. What is it about work camping that I find so appealing after working in uh, my own business and working for other people? And I really started work camping a number of years ago, and I believe I talked about this before, but um, I had a teardrop camper. I did. I used to do woodworking and travel, and I had a teardrop that I used to camp in when I would travel and uh, do my furniture at art shows. And in the winter, I'd do ski resorts and or art shows. Um, just depends on what was available. It's funny, winter I'm down here and it's not the same environment because most of my friends and the people that I normally hang out with are up in Ohio, so it's kind of like a, uh, uh, a winter sabbatical and I get to go out and do stuff by myself and um, I enjoy that. Make us a little old campfire today. Oh, 
So hopefully in your rig, you've come up with some um, storage techniques so that, you know, if you're going to boondock, and I think we're already at an advantage with this mobile adaptable sustainable homestead concept here, the MASH unit, that if you do, if you've ever done this backpacking or, or car camping, this is just a big version of that. And if you can get rice and some staples, flour, you know, you can bake. I've done videos on the stuff that I have. I use my Omnia, my Omnia stovetop oven to bake in. I've been making stuff in that. Um, I make a lot of biscuits and things in there just because they're, it's just easy. I don't bake a lot, but I can make breads and any kind of dish you need to cook in an oven, you can cook in there. Remember, it's just going to be, look like a bunk pan. You know, I feel very positive as far as the uh, advantages of having this mobile, mobile homestead I can roll around with. So although I have some industrial noise behind me, I'm sitting here next to my little tree fort under this uh, big old live oak, and there's a neighborhood a few uh, hundred yards that way. But the sense of place here, it, it does have, um, it's got a good feeling, it's got a good vibe to it. Um, so I enjoy being out here, um, just sitting here and just listening and kind of looking at the trees. Kind of like up home in the Mohican Valley. Um, a lot of people like to camp by the river. I like the big wide open valley view. It's my favorite. It's just great quest we always have for that sense of place, where we're going to end up, where's that one place that we're going to be that, that feels like home or feels like it's somewhere we've always belonged. And I... So getting out of here, I'm going to head up to uh, north on 75, cut across the 10 west past Tallahassee and then up through Dothan, Alabama to catch 65 and Montgomery. Roll up through Tennessee, uh, Kentucky, cross the Bluegrass Parkway. Um, I've got a work ca uh, work campers. Yeah. I've got a Boondockers welcome arranged in Dothan, Alabama, and then one outside of uh, Lexington, Kentucky. I'm gonna cut across uh, up to 75, then go up to Cincinnati. So my second stop is gonna be somewhere in Tennessee. I don't know if I'm gonna try to go to. Um, the Texas Tea Campground, the same place I stopped on the way down, or push for a truck stop or a uh, rest area. My only concern is that if there are a lot of people on the road and not a lot of space for everybody to stay. So, do some more campsite deconstruction today. I don't really have that much left to do. Run the generator again, make sure it's good to go in case I need to run that on the way home. Probably gonna wash the car. Maybe wash the camper again, just to keep so it's looking nice. Because how how are we as a nation going to pull together, hopefully, um, and overcome whatever challenges are ahead? How many people out there are, are in the same boat as 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 myself? I mean, I you know I have to have an income to pay my bills, but I know there are people with sticks and bricks that you know can lose their house or don't know where they're going to feed kids. It's, it's just a lot of things to think. And I, I don't know, I guess what I'm hoping is that everybody pulls together even more. I think that we don't look to our neighbors and our good neighbors uh, for a sense of community. And I, I think that's something that this RV lifestyle is a definite benefit is this sense of community and these friendships you develop and the fact that you may not know these people really well, but you share this common, this common bond, this common love for the, for the road and just to be out there. And because we're all so much alike in that way, um, we help each other out in times of need and we all actually care about each other and hope that, you know, someone I know may be a thousand miles away in the desert of Arizona, but I can still communicate with them and I can still, and still hope they're okay. So we're going to have to see, we're going to have to see what happens in the future, whether um, our pioneering spirit, the good parts of that, that, uh, that we're always trying to come up with a new thing, it sticks in my mind is the thing that this thing is, is not only a regional, it's local because it's a local problem because you're local to where you are, but this thing is local, it's regional, it's national, and it's pretty much across the globe, and you just don't know what's going to come out the other side. And the only thing that we can do is uh, really pull ourselves together with our friends and our community locally and support them and to try to make sure that we're all taken care of and we'll go from there.
Hope everybody uh, still comes out to the meetup on the Mohican in June. We can cross paths and share some campfire, possibly at a six to twelve foot distance between between people. But uh, we're still gonna have our have our meetup, and I'm sure we're still gonna be open. We'll just have to uh, adjust some things, possibly if this whole uh, viral deal hasn't blown through by then. i